telegraph in half It'd be the inspector jack on the wall path First class, leaving mites with a cast Causing ruckus like the aftermath from guns blast Run fast, here comes the verbal assaulter Rhymes running wild like a child in a walker I scored from the inner slums abroad And my thoughts are ready to start I slice the mic from the core Testing 9-4, testing 9-4, testing 9-4 Earth to Sewanee, Earth to Atlanta, testing 9-4, as in episode 94. And by the way, Happy New Year to everybody out there. What's going on, everybody? A-League show, episode 94, how we've been living so far in this new year of 2019. Everything is good. We're here. We're here. It's, it's Sunday. Uh, it's another day that the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad in it. <laughs> <laughs> and I thought I was supposed to be the pastor, Pastor King. <laughs> I, I don't. I don't have. I don't have any of that to say. I mean, I don't. I'm, I don't know how to put it into words as beautifully as they did. But uh, I'm good too. This dude just owned it. Like he put it like completely. Like he he just he just owned it right there. Coming in with like you you on, on, on some pastor stuff like going on. Well, it is a Sunday though. You're well, right. you know, it's always a blessing to be able to come here. You know, and chat it up with you guys. So I, I definitely oh, you yeah. know always appreciate the opportunity. So. I felt it was necessary to start this new year, you know, and this, uh, this on the Sunday. right foot, man. On the right foot, so absolutely, you got to, you absolutely got to. I see what you, I see what you're talking about for sure. <laughs> um, yeah, it's, uh, you know, it's, it's gotten off to a, to an interesting start. By the way, one of the things I always do every year is because, you know, for those that probably know me in a previous life, I am a huge radio nerd. So it's always one of those things. I always had to do this. I do this at the end of, at the end of 2018, at the end of every single year. The number you have dialed or texted, 2018, <laughs> is no longer in service. The new number is 2019. Please make a name for it. Please make a note of it because you know your side bay is probably going to make a note of it too. <laughs> oh, man. We, we bringing in 2019 with the side bays. Oh, man. Oh, man. <laughs> we ended it, it 2018 with the Rihanna stick. All right, all right. Rihanna stick. <laughs> give, give us one more, King. Stick. <laughs> <laughs> and Can't now we come in here with uh, side bays, okay? Side bays and <laughs> side bays and 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 side bays and sermons. <laughs> side bays and sermons. That's that's catchy right there. That sounds that's, like that sounds like probably what the what, like if we had like if we had like a title for this episode, like it would probably side bays and sermons. <laughs> there it is. There it is. There it is. Side bays, sermons, and sidelines, as in football sidelines. Let's get into it. So, you know, 2018 was um, one of the reasons as to why we want to, you know, definitely bring 2018 to a close for sure was because, you know, 2018 was, you know, not exactly the best of years for our beloved Atlanta Falcons. So, <laughs> and that may be putting it mildly. And if the Saints are in the Super Bowl, I feel like that would that would just bring it to a whole nother level of ha huh, come againness. Yeah. So, so going into this, uh, you know, going into the off season, just looking at you know, just looking at everything, you know, uh, what do you feel like you know has to be you know has to be done for you know for the you know for the Falcons to you know to turn it around as uh, you know we're still away from 2019, but it's never too early to talk football for sure. Uh, trenches. Trenches, 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 mm. trenches, 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 <laughs> trenches, 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 trenches. If you sign any or draft anyone who doesn't play in the trenches, I'll be very upset. I, I see that. I, yeah, I have to agree with you. I mean, you know, games are won. In, in the trenches. In the trenches. So Pound and ground, <laughs> running the football. Absolutely, absolutely. And that's another thing. I think you guys definitely have to – I'm not sure if it's been uh, mentioned as often yet, you know, with the offseason um, about to uh, become a, a thing now. But uh, what you guys going to do with uh, with TC? I, I mean, that that's... They got to use utilize him more in the offense, absolutely. I mean, he's a free agent. I would he's let free, him go. Yeah, yeah I think he's going to bounce. I definitely think you guys got to get something in return. If you want to know the truth about it, I would, I would let uh, Coleman walk. And then I would also try to find a trade partner for Devontae Freeman because he's not mm -hmm. the same player. He's not healthy. He never's gonna, he's never going to be healthy again. Like, I I tried to tell people this a couple years ago when they wanted to pay him all this money. I was just like, okay, you could pay it, but if you look at his running style, it's mm -hmm. it's a running style based off being hungry. Right. Yes. So if he doesn't have that hunger anymore – like that it in him that makes him wanna that makes him wanna just run for 120 or every game. Yeah, mm -hmm. I'm, I'm not going down a man for you know getting his money and you know feeling like you know he needs to protect himself. But right. at the same time, like 
it's it's easier to be hungry when you're being underpaid. Yeah. Than there is when you got the money in the bank. Absolutely. Right. True. So I, I, I don't want to put that on him as a you know as a person. I don't know the guy. I mean he might he might be very driven and he may just have had some bad luck, but mm-hmm. yeah. His running style is not one that's gonna be uh sustainable for a long period of time. And it's nah. always been that way. Yeah. Right. So I mean if I'm the Falcons, I'm 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 looking at this and I'm saying, well, we saved him for this whole year, so he has one year less of fresher legs. But I mean, mm-hmm. he got hurt this year and he hadn't even played a game yet. Exactly. So I mean, right. that's not a good sign for a running back because you don't get hit in practice anymore. Right. So yeah. I, I'm have, trading him. You have a point, and uh, kind of switching to the defensive side. I mean, you know, uh, Demonte KZ. Or, or how do you pronounce his last name? Kazee? Yeah. Mm-hmm. Uh, you know, he really, really, you know, was a bright spot in that secondary when, yep. when uh, Ricardo Allen went down and, uh, you know, um, uh, uh, Keanu Neal. So mm-hmm. it's like, mm-hmm. what do you do with him now uh, for next year? I know he's obviously going to have some sort of a role in that secondary and the yeah. defense in general. But, right. you know, D- Dan Quinn has a very tough decision to make as how much he's going to utilize him now because the guy led the league in interceptions with, what, five or six? He mm-hmm. had six or seven, I think. Six or seven. I can't so. remember how many he had, but I, I was disappointed when Dan Quinn came out and said, if Ricardo's out, Allen's healthy, he's our he's our safety. Yeah. I, yeah. Like, that's, that's – if I was if I was KZ, I would feel a little disrespected. Right. I mean, right. and then you know, and then in a couple of years, whenever this guy comes up to be a free agent and he goes somewhere else, fans will be all over him. Hey, yeah, you, they'll be all. You over have him. no loyalty and blah blah blah. But yeah, like you just went out and put up probably what will be the best year of your career. Probably is yep. what has been one of the best career uh, seasons by a Falcons secondary player in in decades. Absolutely. Yeah. So, Absolutely. I mean, I'm I'm not gonna blame the guy when he says, "Well, they're not loyal to me, so why why do I need to stay here?" Exactly. Mm-hmm. So, All right. I, I mean, I I definitely think he will have a role. I mean, and with Brian Poole being a free agent, mm-hmm. that kind of maybe opens up the opportunity for him to play in the slot a little bit. Mm-hmm. Yeah. But, I mean, to be honest, I like Ricardo Allen and what he's brought to the team, but he's not he's not. I mean, he's he's always been that one spot of the defense that's just mm-hmm. okay. He, that's the that's the guy that yeah. I don't really know about. He's a liability. Yeah, right. I mean, and, and that's just and that's just what it is. I mean, he's small. He's he doesn't tackle really well, but I mean, he's a leader. So I mean, mm-hmm. he needs he needs to be on the team. But yeah, when when faced with the decision of okay, do I put the guy on the field that had seven interceptions or yeah. the guy who just set out an entire season with an Achilles injury, which is a very hard injury to deal with for defensive backs. Absolutely, mm-hmm. so. absolutely. And another thing, I mean, it's kind of like uh, for Dan Quinn, you almost want to say he has to play Rico because they just paid him, right? Yeah. yeah. But then it's like, okay, I need to think about what's best for my team going forward in the future. And obviously, mm-hmm. uh, KZ, you know, he's shown that he's more of a skill safety than mm-hmm. uh, Rico is, as well as a better tackler, yeah. at, at, mm-hmm. you know, being much smaller too. So, you know, I, I, I think, uh, you know, the Falcons in general just have a lot of decisions to make going forward. I mean, they obviously made the decision to go with Dirk Cutter uh, mm-hmm. again as the OC. Um, yeah. So we'll see how that plays out. A lot of fans, uh, they they honestly believe that this may be a good thing for the offense and Matt Ryan in general. So mm-hmm. I remember, th- speaking to the offense, because I'm glad you segued in that, because I remember I was listening to somebody, somebody some, uh, somewhere and they was talking about the pass versus run discrepancy that is so prevalent within the Falcons offense like you could see it watching any Falcons game Mm -hmm. and I think they had like a two to three ratio where like 60 some odd percent of the time they were throwing the ball and only only 33 percent or something like that they were running the ball that's not going to win you games in the NFL Mm -hmm. like I know it's flashy I know it's sexy to you know obsess over big you know passing stats like 300 yards four touchdowns 23 (laughs) out of 31 passing but when it comes down to the meat and potatoes in it Mm -hmm. if you're going to win games in this league you got to run the football yeah just look at what the Los Angeles Rams just did no look at at the two games yesterday The, the Kansas City Chiefs are probably one of the sexiest Stat happy, pass happy team in the league with but Mahomes. Them, but when the thing got down to the end of the game, what did they do? They mm-hmm. mashed exactly right. They they could decide, hey, I want to mash, and they did it. 
because yep. that's what you got to do playing playoff football in in, in, in the cold, cold weather. Cold yeah. weather in January. Yeah. Cold that's how you January. win championships. The sexiness will get you there. Right. Yeah. But the sexiness will get you sent home early. Exactly. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> so that's, true. that's just football. That's the way it's been forever. And that's the way seemingly it's always going to be. Oh, by the way, introduce yourself this 2019. I believe we have just been, uh, our presence has just been graced by the <laughs> one, the only, the incomparable <laughs> Rashad Milligan. How you doing, Rashad? I appreciate that, King. Good, uh, uh, good column on uh, Maori, Maori Davenport. Oh yeah, yeah, for sure. Check that out. Beyond the W dot com. Sh- shout out um, to um, the the A H S A A. That that was a great decision. Um, I know it's, I know it could be tough for a person in power to admit they're wrong. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> because they they like constantly have multiple chances. Like they had mm-hmm. the ruling, the hearing, and all that, and then yeah. they had. The, uh, the statement they put out after Jay Billis initially called them out, mm-hmm. and then Kobe came out. Then the WNBA came out. Then the Marcus Cousins came out. Then LeBron came out. Then Wade came out. <laughs> and yeah. then it was just like, okay, she can play. Yeah. <laughs> right. Yo, I think it was like a judge's ruling. I think they overturned the – I think they overturned the Alabama High School Athletic Association and – you know, and then after that, I think there was like, oh, she can play. And in her first game back, she balled. She dropped 25 points. Well, yeah, I mean, you know, she's with Team USA for a reason. So. Thank you, exactly. But, uh, but and she's going to Rutgers. She's going to be playing her to see Vivian Stringer. So, wow. yeah, but I, I'm glad. So she'll be in the W in a few I'm years. Glad the, uh, the the decision was what it ended up being because it, if it if it had to be what it was I, I wouldn't be able to talk about it on the, on the show <laughs> right yeah. exactly but you know it was you know that decision you know that just it's just amazing how that you know just how that whole thing you know has just really evolved and how there's just been this so much you know groundswell of support like you know even you know it's even got to a point where now politicians in Alabama, which can be worth a dime a dozen sometimes, politicians in Alabama, they actually... Akeem Balaam. Akeem Balaam said that. <laughs> he, he said it. <laughs> A-K-I-E-M B-A-I-L-U-M Twitter Graham Beyond the W. But, <laughs> but, um, but even Alabama politicians, they introduced this, you know, they introduced this this uh, bill in Montgomery and they're trying to like have like oversight of the AHSAA because they were just so upset over this decision that they were, you know, they were just like uh we don't like what's really going on here we're gonna have to start keeping an eye on you dudes <laughs> so so yeah i mean that's just uh you know that was just like, a like huge i said thing. man shout out to the a h s a a i appreciate you know what i'm saying my permanent credential for this season yeah and thank you for letting me do my job absolutely man <laughs> absolutely uh, like jeremy ha- jeremy ha- probably has enough you know dealing with the georgia high school athletic <laughs> association so <laughs> yeah i'm hoping hopefully we won't have to deal with nothing like they, this. they let me go to uh, uh a game for troop in, in the playoffs uh when, oh, wow. when, when all of our alabama teams were out and we had troop playing and yeah. then Callaway mm-hmm. was playing too the LaGrange editor had to go to Callaway, so they were like, oh, since you guys technically cover Troop anyway, you uh-huh. want to cover it? So I went, and then um, when I went to check in, because, you know, you had to have your credential, mm-hmm. yeah. I was like, uh, I cover Troop. I'm on the Georgia state line. And then I showed them. They're like, "Well, I guess the rules don't say what state your credential has to be from." <laughs> uh, yeah, they, and they plus, I feel went. like they have to. Plus, I feel like they would welcome the. You know, they would welcome the attention from you know from other states because I feel like that places that have metropolitan areas that just so happen to encompass two states. I feel like that that is. A, I feel like that that's a common thing. Like, imagine what New York reporters, like lo- no, local New York reporters, had to go through having to cover events in New York, Connecticut, and New Jersey. Yeah. You, you, you'd wow. be surprised how entitled some of these uh, firms feel. Yeah, and some of these associations and stuff. Yeah, I'll they, leave it at that. Yeah, practically, <laughs> practically. That's a good point. Yeah, but uh, but yeah, but yeah, you know, shout out to everybody to uh, you know, to Maori Davenport and you know everyone in Alabama, and also speaking of shout outs, I would really give a shout out to uh, you know, to a couple of uh, well known friends we have here, um, Caleb Johnson. Yes, sir. Yes, yeah, sir. Caleb started, Johnson started yesterday. Well, he didn't start yesterday. He started last week, but uh-huh. he uh, had his first on air hit yesterday. Right at ninety at ninety two nice. nine. Big and, thing. Um, he he did it. He's doing it again this morning right now. So. Yeah, actually, right. I uh, I heard him a little bit this morning. Um, uh huh. You know, doing this thing. I'm proud of him, man. Proud Absolutely. Him. Every, every twenty minutes. Um, on the hour, Caleb Johnson's giving the you know two minute little breakdown. So right, uh, if y'all in Atlanta or if you're not, just look up ninety two ninety game on Google. I'm pretty sure most of our listeners are from Atlanta because they're like our friends. But 
Right. <laughs> <laughs> right, for sure. So shout out to him for sure. And also shout out to the man, the myth, the eleven, David Sheely, landing the job in Knoxville too. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. So he's doing big da- things David's, too. David's gonna be covering the, the Vols, uh mainly. That that was right. gonna be his main job up there. Knoxville, uh he said I think it's the NBC affiliate and he said yeah. W B I R is uh yeah. Is the uh, one one of the more respected local stations in the country? So. Exactly. They're Shout a, out to David, man. They're he, under he the, the uh, they're under the Tegna umbrella, same uh, same as uh, Eleven Alive. So uh, huge for him, and that's a huge uh, that's a huge uh, uh, women's basketball city too. You know, with the oh, you know yeah, with, yeah. with their history they that become, they have. They're becoming a men's basketball city too. <laughs> true. Yeah, yeah exactly. Auburn, they, they got a team. Yeah, yeah. Mm-hmm. both but, of these cities got a. They, Auburn's got a great team too. Yeah. Exactly. Uh, Auburn's got a team, but um, yeah. Uh, w- what I want to point out is no. Notice how they're the last two guests on the show. I mean, so mm-hmm. if you're looking for a job, man, come get my <laughs> Where you plug? <laughs> Where the plug, man? You, you, you might as well have Where did, the plug? The, did the Shook Knight. If, yeah, if yeah. You, <laughs> you want a nice job? <laughs> you don't want your editor dancing in your videos? <laughs> come on, Ailey. <laughs> Oh my gosh, man! That, it's like it's like that's 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 standard now. It's protocol. You have to do that whenever you're introducing. Oh, man. Yeah, you got to do that now because the dude from it. the dude from Clemson brought that back. He did. The dude yeah. from Clemson come to Death brought Valley. that. <laughs> come to Death Valley. Come to Death Row. All right, all right. Yeah, we coming to Death Valley. <laughs> that's awesome. Man, hang y'all in the L. <laughs> but, but, but what are we talking about now? Are we talking about the NBA, uh, Ricky. Yeah. Oh, we, uh, we were. We were talking about the. We were talking about the Falcons. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. I heard. I heard y'all started off with the Falcons. Yeah. So <laughs> I, I'm but, not. I'm not gonna add too much into it. Uh, so I got one Antonio more thing to Brown. say. Oh no, yeah. Oh yeah. No, go ahead. Uh, well, obviously, this is something we've already talked about, so I don't even need to elaborate on it much. But but when the Odell rumors were happening, mm-hmm. um, Jeremy Preach. pretty much settled it. <laughs> the, the Falcons, the Falcons literally need help at every single position on the field, except yeah. for wide receiver. Except for wide receiver. <laughs> Besides wide receiver, like I would even take a new quarterback over another like, receiver. We, we, we didn't need what? Calvin Ridley, and we drafted Calvin Ridley to make the the receiving core even stronger. So it's just like. We're, we're we're good. We good on on this side. Like Julio <laughs> said it best. We good over we here. Good. Yeah, I think <laughs> I, I do right, think that they need to. I do think that they need to start looking at the QB position because I feel like I feel like the win the window is closed on Matt Ryan. I feel like it's closed on him. So, so let me ask really quickly, right? Mm-hmm. In regards to Muhammad Sanu, and I and I like him because he's from up top. You know, he's from Jersey. I'm from <laughs> I'm from I'm from New York. A king. You know what it is. Yeah, but, yeah, yeah, but, yeah. So how confident are you guys? in him that he can play his role even though he's probably the third you know option on that uh on on in the receiving court you guys think that he you know is going to be able to continue to oh, yeah. uh provide for you guys in that aspect I would I wouldn't trade Muhammad Sanu like if I have a list of players that I would get rid of mm-hmm. and Muhammad Sanu like down at the very bottom of players and it's not because of what he does on the field right. it's just his attitude right like, he's a dog yeah he's, he's a, a dog, dog. and yeah, the Falcons don't have many of those type guys right. like right. you may have Deion Jones uh maybe Devontae Devontae Freeman. Freeman when he's on the mm-hmm. field yeah when he's playing <laughs> yeah. uh uh Jake Matthews is a, a under uh, underdog, mm-hmm. uh-huh. uh, Keanu Neal's a dog. Yeah, he's a dog. But but Muhammad Sanu, like, he doesn't catch many passes. But he, if if you if you just one of those guys that's gonna hang around the pile, he'll come in and knock the. He gonna make his presence. Yeah, down. he gonna make you feel him. Right, I, I love that. Yeah, like I, I don't I don't want to get rid of him. And people who saying, well, you need to. You got a, you already got a Calvin. It's not gonna work if you don't have Muhammad Sanu. Absolutely, I it's agree just with that you. simple. I exactly. So and that's what we was talking about earlier, like. The receiving core is not the issue with the Falcons, and in many ways, it's one of those issues where you know Matt Ryan is he's okay, but one wonders what his numbers would be if he didn't have the receiving core that he has. Because, like I said, the receiving core is not the issue with the Falcons. All right, you know, that's it, their that's their, one of their strong spots. Yeah, mm-hmm. I mean, and then you had a point that I want to talk about. Uh, you said they need to start looking at uh, you know a potential quarterback. I know I know Matt Ryan just got paid, but yeah, for me, uh, the window closed. I mean, I. I mean, I can't see them filling all the holes they have in a one off season. Mm-hmm. So now, okay, you 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 say, well, okay, well, we got another off season. Okay, you, now you're pushing two, three years with a man that's 32, 33, yeah. 34. I mean, Matt Ryan's right. not going to be good forever. Right. Exactly. Then this kid at Clemson, you got this Lawrence. kid at you got this kid at Clemson that is so special, Trevor Lawrence. If I'm an NFL franchise, I'm trying to figure out how. To position myself to get in position to get this kid, 
Mm-hmm. Now, if I'm the Atlanta Falcons, if they come home Super Bowl list after this year, which yeah. they will, because they have too many. Like, there's too many holes. Like, you have seven picks, and you need three starting offensive linemen. Mm-hmm. Uh, yeah, you need three. Ryan Schrader sucks. Yeah, uh, <laughs> yeah. You gotta figure out. B State. You gotta figure out what you're gonna do with uh Vic Beasley. I would cut him. If he wants to come back for cheaper, cool. But right. he's not the starter anymore. So you got to get a pass rusher. Yeah. Yeah. Edge rusher. Uh, you need to find a – as awful as Robert Alford was, you got to find an outside corner. Maybe that's Isaiah Oliver. Mm-hmm. But Brian Poole's a free agent. So now you need a slot corner. Mm-hmm. You see what I'm saying? Like, you can, the you, team is literally falling apart as we go. And so – And you can make the argument that true font. I mean, true he front hasn't – He had a bad year this year. Yeah, he, he really has. So – Uh-huh. If I'm the Falcons, if they don't win the Super Bowl next year, I'm starting to jettison some of these guys. Like, True Funk, give yeah. me third, fourth round pick. Uh, Julio, give me a second or third round pick. Mm-hmm. Uh, Matt Ryan, give me first pick. Give me a first round pick. Uh, yeah. Devontae Freeman, I'll take a sixth or a seventh. And I want to be bad enough to, in 2021, I want the number one pick. Because mm-hmm. Trevor Lawrence is – LeBron James coming to the NBA talent. What he did in that cha- in that national championship game was something else. Even yeah, even before then, like yeah. this, like he is on the next the the next level. Like he's Peyton Manning, but athletic. Ooh, that, wow, that's a that, that's a big that's a hell of big is, comparison. The, the Peyton, he, he doesn't even like care. Like, Whew. yeah, that's like a, he like like I don't know how you're this good and you just out there his, just like his, his personality. He's like. Football doesn't define me. You know? Yeah, and, and they, those and, are and, the people and, who are great. <laughs> like, like, like the kids that are like four stars, five stars in high school. That's it's true. Like nothing but football, 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 and like that's how they get so good because their entire life is football. Mm-hmm. For right. Trevor Lawrence to be like, I'm not defined by football, and to be as good as he is is something. That's else. scary. That's yeah. scary because, like you said, I feel like that. There, there's some validity to that because I remember seeing some, you know, I remember seeing documentaries about this and they compared Peyton Manning to Ryan Leaf in that yeah, draft yeah. when they were both, you know, when they were both drafted. And they was talking about how Peyton Manning was, you know, this sort of workman's, you know, sort of sort of type dude. And Ryan Leaf, when he got drafted, he's talking about going to Vegas. Yeah. Trevor Lawrence ain't cut from that same cloth where he's going to go to Vegas. Right, right. Uh, Dimitri is uh, Dwayne Haskins heading to New York. I would like to think he, sh- you know, he is. He, well, he, was, he, wait, hold on, hold on, hold on. I got a question. Well, what, I, I watched, that? I watched a, a few, a couple, just a couple Ohio State games this year. Mm-hmm. Was Haskins the quarterback at the end of the game against Maryland? Yeah, yeah, he was, mm-hmm. he was wait, in there. He, when he missed that wide open pass. <laughs> all right, all right. Like, well, like well, that, that's the one thing I think about when I think about that man. Now is that one pass? Well, at the end you of can't the just game? hold him to that. I mean, you got your two attacker Valois and your Trevor Lawrence's, and yeah. you know the other guys that miss easy passes as wait, well. Wait, hold on, hold on. Am I tripping? Well, well, was that Maryland that missed the easy pass, and then Ohio State won? Well, come yeah, on, Ohio yeah, State yeah, won. yeah, yeah, yeah. Ohio State won. But like I said, I mean, yeah. he's still, you know, he's a college quarterback. These guys aren't going to make every throw. But I definitely think that's the quarterback the Giants should be focused on. Uh, I mean, I mean, he look, look now, he uh, he's he's every, he's everything that Pat Sherman wants in a quarterback. He, yeah. He's a big guy, you know. He can get out of the pocket when needed. They're not they're not looking for a uh, necessarily a dual threat quarterback. Yeah. yeah. But I think he has the weapons. He has the ability to utilize. Uh, the weapons that we have in New York, uh, a- and yeah. he and he's from the city. Let so. me put you Giants fans up on some game right quick. Let me <laughs> let me listen. Let me listen. Do this. <laughs> Do this. Bring it. If there's not a quarterback that's a franchise quarterback, don't take a quarterback. I think Dwayne could be a this a court, franchise. This quarterback. quarterback class is really weak. It's uh, not. It's not what it was when Justin Hubert was coming out. When I Justin agree. Hubert said, "I'm not coming." That would have been as far as a Giants GM. Mm-hmm. I would have said, "Well, let's see. Let's see what else we can fix before we get our guy." Because next year's quarterback class you got Tua, uh, Jake Fromm, Eason, uh, Herbert. Those are four starter guys that can get you to the playoffs. Uh-huh. Check, you, you check think, this out. You think check. Eason's going in? Next he, year? He, 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 has he, it will be he, really hard yeah. for him not to. Because yeah, the stats to. he's going to put up, if he's healthy. Red, redshirt sophomore? He's right. a real. Redshirt sophomore. He'll be a junior. Yeah, he'll sophomore. be a junior. Mm-hmm. But he, did he get, oh yeah, he did get the red shirt at UGA. Wait, hold on. I'm not tripping. All right. He was a Fresh, sophomore when he got hurt at Georgia. Eason, that was sophomore Sof- year. Right. But he was still in pads the whole time. 
Yeah, he was. Mm-hmm. Okay. So that And he right. registered it this year. So so he'll be a registered junior. Yeah. Oh damn. Mm-hmm. But check yeah, this I out. He sounds that old. I really oh, yeah. believe that Haskins is better than those quarterbacks you just named outside of maybe he has Herbert. More potential. Maybe, maybe Herbert. But here's the thing. We can draft Haskins because of all of the weapons that we have already established. We can win now with him, is mm-hmm. what I'm saying. He yeah. may not be the franchise quarterback for who gonna five. Blo- who's gonna block for him? Well, we're we're building that up. I mean, offensive <laughs> the offensive that line does have the, to be built the, up. The, the offensive line, and, and this is not being biased or anything, the offensive line honestly played better. As the season progressed, because Gettleman and you know Sherman and, and those that make the calls, they they started to you know put pieces together and and try to I guess resurrect the offensive line. Well, you know what? So I, I, there is some truth to that. Are you yeah. uh, offensive line is such a fickle position because yeah. it's like it's not about having talent. It's about it's sometimes it's not about okay. Well, let me get the most talented the most talented guys I can get and throw Chemistry. them out there. Mm-hmm. It's a lot of it is just. How they link together, mm-hmm. like right? You said, I mean, exactly. It, that's if you can find that combination of five guys that just play well together, then you'll uh-huh. have a decent offensive line. Yeah. So I mean, there is some truth to that. I just I, I have a hard time drafting quarterbacks that high with only 10, 13 starts. Like you mm-hmm. need at least two years of of college starting to be a great NFL quarterback. Sounds but, like speaking of quarterbacks, sounds like somebody has practically started the hashtag Go Sorry for Laurie campaign. <laughs> <laughs> sorry for Laurie. Sorry, yeah, coming we, up with the really creative. If, uh, they don't, if they don't win the Super Bowl <laughs> next year, we got to have Trevor. We, we have to have him. Yeah, Trevor is definitely a guy you guys should target, I believe, as well. Oh, like, yeah. I mean, he's from Georgia. Yeah. You know, the city would really embrace him. He's he's just yeah. a really humble kid. He's cool as the wind. Yeah. Mm-hmm. You know? That, yeah. Right. So I think that would be a good option for you guys in the future. Mm-hmm. Potentially. Future. <laughs> Speaking of future. Speaking of which? The Atlanta Hawks. Yeah. Exactly. It's exactly. I, I don't know how I don't know how you can talk down Kevin Herter, man. No, me neither. Uh, and, and I'm talking to you, Jeremy. Oh, oh I don't have nothing bad to say about Je- Kevin Herter. Jeremy, <laughs> Jeremy said the, the second one of them boys. One yeah. of them Duke boys. One of Nasir Little, whoever get drafted in the lottery with that wing pick. Uh-huh. Kevin Herter going to the know bench. Kevin Herter. <laughs> yeah. Herter is like a more athletic Kyle Corver, in my opinion. I mean, yeah. I mean, Herter, uh, Herter can my, play. My bro. cousin, he's uh, nice. like, 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 he's he not compared a him to he Chandler play. Parsons. I would accept that comparison. He's probably a better shooter, though, a yeah. more efficient shooter than uh, CP. Chad I'm not Boston. talking about Chandler Parsons that like literally just got a check and yeah, sat I'll, down. I'll, I'll I'm not talking about that one. I'm talking about the one from Memphis. Memphis, yeah, that guy, yeah, that yeah. dude. <laughs> yeah, I mean, I'm not, I don't have nothing bad to say about Kevin Herter. Man, he can play. But as soon as they get R.J. Barrett or somebody that actually like a like, <laughs> that's going to be a superstar, he's not going to be a starter. Yeah, <laughs> but and sometimes I, maybe that's they okay. should be looking for superstars right about now. They just need players to eventually get to that point. <laughs> yeah. Right, like like a John Collins, who's I mean is thriving right now. Oh and, yeah, Collins and, is and out the, there doing doing work. I like that dude he said, a lot. He said man. work to do defensively. Yeah. Absolutely, yeah. absolutely, and that's mm-hmm. probably the hardest. Uh, aspect of the game for bigs especially when they yeah, make the transition yeah. mm-hmm. is the defensive side of it especially uh, with all the switching going on now mm-hmm. exactly yeah so. nowadays absolutely exactly but I, I mean you guys man i wish we had someone like that for the knicks <laughs> to, i really to do. look forward to i yeah. really do seriously <laughs> man seriously i mean we, we got this guy named porzingis but he doesn't play he don't right. play no more and, and, <laughs> he chilling. and even though he's a seven foot three guy that could shoot from half court i don't know if he's going to be able to do that once he comes back Nope. To be either. honest. Mm-hmm. And, and that right. goes to that whole um, concern that Jeremy had. I don't know if it was Jeremy or David um, that had the concern about Bo Bowl and, and seven footers yeah. And, yeah. and always yeah. getting hurt. That's tough, man. When they, I, hurt, when they hurt them legs, man, that's, that's right. tough. Yeah. Especially nowadays. Because seven footers, man. seven footers, it's like they're expected to pretty much play all positions nowadays. Yep. Because it's just the it's just the way that the NBA is. It's just the way that NBA teams are constructed. Like in the past, you could have you know somebody like a Hakeem Olajuwon or a Shaq that would just stay right there, posted up in the paint, and just be that presence. Mm-hmm. But nowadays, with all the switching and since everything is so predicated on since everything is so predicated on small play mm-hmm. it's like you know it's like you had to be an athletic big man absolutely yep. just check out the uh, Milwaukee Bucks last what six games perhaps 
I mean, uh, Brooke Lopez is shooting transition threes. Yeah. yeah. I'm like, wow. Right. <laughs> I'm like, wow. <laughs> wow. <laughs> it's, it's crazy, man. It is crazy. But, yeah, I like what the Hawks got going on, even though the record doesn't, you know, necessarily. Uh, hey, you know what? And, 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 and then to the people who are concerned on Twitter about, oh, man, John Collins is playing too well. The Hawks going to mess up the tank. Nah. The Hawks are naturally bad enough to make sure the tank is still intact. Exactly. <laughs> <laughs> and the truth the, shall the, set you free. The losses go. are going to come. <laughs> Don't worry about the losses. They are going to come. They're going to be there. <laughs> you're you're going to have a night where Trey Young tries to go one-on-one against the greatest defender in NBA history <laughs> <laughs> to win the game. Because he that thinks he funny. can do that. He thinks he can go ahead and do do that. I, I don't know if he thought like people was just talking on Twitter like Kawhi Leonard's the best defender ever. Yeah, it, he was just like, oh, I'm gonna try this I anyway. Got, right. Yeah, Kawhi. <laughs> what Kawhi? You gotta yeah. like his confidence though, man. You know he's willing to take that last shot. Uh, something that <clears throat> uh, LeBron didn't like. <laughs> LeBron did, something that LeBron didn't like to do when he was when he was uh, Trey Young's age. Yeah, so yeah. Right, right. you know you gotta you gotta like that uh, that that confidence right there. That is right. true. That is true. It's but, like but, he came but, into but the league. You also gotta make the right play. You do. I mean, I, I, right. I feel like he he did that against LA. You yep. know, he mm-hmm. went in the lane against LA, and Tyson Chandler got away with the goal ten. But yep. I mean, you got to know the vet's going to get that call. So I mean, and that one I can understand a little more because he he went past his defender. I forgot who was guarding him, and then mm-hmm. it was just him and Chandler at the rim. Mm-hmm. I can go with that more so than him taking trying a to shot against Kawhi defender. Leonard. Yeah, trying yeah. to take Kawhi Leonard all the way to the rim, like. Mm-hmm. I, <laughs> you didn't get that. You didn't understand I, that yeah, logic. I, I don't get that. <laughs> or at all. even, or even in the preseason game where he just pulled up from almost half court. Oh yeah, yeah. like that. I mean, nobody guarded him, so he was like, "Okay, yeah, I can man. make this shot." Just, so yeah, uh, yeah. I mean, Trey, I don't mind that. It. Trey is young, so he's gonna have to <laughs> yeah. work through that. So yeah, he's gonna man. have to get stronger too. Like that's yeah. one. That's one, that's the that's my uh, biggest issue with his game right now is that when he gets to the hole, he can't finish. Mm-hmm. He's been mm-hmm. finishing a lot. He's yeah, he's gotten better because he's starting to get a little more crafty with it. A little more fillet. Yeah, he's yeah. starting. He, he's starting to realize I can't just go a little here. more like these guys. These big guys are so quick and athletic <laughs> that they gonna block anything I throw up there. If mm-hmm. you just if you just come in there and try to lay it up, that's not gonna work. Exactly. Right. But right, because I mean, that's one of the easiest shots to block, especially it, when you go up against somebody in the paint like that. He's yeah. been very efficient lately. Yeah, fewer, that, fewer, that's, fewer turnovers, making better shot selection. Yeah, like um, last game, he had eighteen points. Uh, five assists, four rebounds on like forty three percent shooting. That's great. So, yeah, I mean, you if know, they were to get that to, from to, him to stay in the forties, the fifties, that that's really good. Yeah, mm-hmm. and uh, and then Kevin Herter had twenty nine points. Twenty nine, and then man. John yeah. Collins had twenty seven and the game winner. That's what I'm and saying. Nine, and nine rebounds. Exactly. So, that's that that big three right there, that that core three. What do you what do you suit. guys? I'm sorry. Uh, what do, no? Actually, go ahead because you might make a better point than I'm about. He to He said make, a big so. three. I just had a heart attack. <laughs> <laughs> go ahead. I was gonna I was gonna actually say, <laughs> what do you guys think you can get in return for Kent Bazemore? Because I'm I'm assuming that he's gonna oh. he's gonna depart soon, right? No, nah, they they. Well, the thing is, Kent makes so much. He makes 17 mil a year, so they're not gonna be able to trade him. Mm. Um. Deadman, Deadman, and Lynn are two pieces that that they can trade, and they're kind of like the obvious pieces because mm-hmm. Deadman and, and Lynn are playing really well, and then Lynn just doesn't get time because they prior t- prioritize uh, Trey over him. So, uh, so Lynn's probably gonna get traded. They could probably get, I don't know, you could probably get a couple draft picks, but <laughs> but Schlenk isn't trying to get draft picks because they already have like five draft picks. Yeah, in you the can't, next you can't two, draft two years. Your whole yeah. team can't be rookies. Shout right. out to yeah. shout out to Brad Roland. Brad, that, that was on Brad's uh, podcast with Schlenk for the 500 episode of the, his podcast, Locked In. So mm-hmm. shout out to him. But um, I, dang, what I'm. Oh yeah, all right. So so what what can you get in return? Um, you have to think about what they did last year with, with Ilya Sova and um and uh what it was it? Bellinelli. Bellinelli. That, yeah, that's his Bellinelli, name. Yeah. Mm-hmm. They they kind of just got rid of him. Mm-hmm. Uh, they they bought him out because you know they were like they didn't like what they were being offered for them, and um you know they let set those guys free to say. So I think they might just have to let. But Lynn gets paid a lot too, which makes things difficult. Yeah. The Lynn gets paid about twelve, thirteen mil a year. So, Deadman's the easiest person to move because he gets paid probably the least out of all those tradable pieces, and he's still putting up good numbers. And then he's expiring after this year too, right? Yeah, yeah. He, so, he, he's so. a good teammate. He's a good teammate. Um, funny person. He tried to call me out in the locker room. The, the other <laughs> <week>. <laughs> like, yeah, I have my uh, my camera out, 
and I wasn't recording, but I just had it ready because Alex Lynn looked like he was about to turn around and then just leave. All right. So I just had it out. It wasn't recording. Mm -hmm. You're like, dang, man, you got you filming this man in the trash can. <laughs> bro, he, hey, he filmed, he recording you, bro. Oh, I'm like, dang. bro, no, no, I'm not. No, I'm not recording oh, you. Oh, man. And then the he, whole, tried to, he tried to pull an EZL on yeah, you for Friday. <laughs> the, 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 whole, <laughs> the, the whole locker room laughing, bro. And I'm just like, no, that's not. What's well, going that on? Wasn't what's going on, man. <laughs> but yeah, man. So if, if the Hawks can get rid of Deadman mm -hmm. and Lynn, um, Baysmore isn't gonna happen. He's just gonna be in Atlanta until that contract runs out. Isn't his isn't last is it this year his last year or does he have like an option for next year? He has. It was a three year deal, was it? This is the third year. Oh yeah. He's, yeah he's no, been. no, no, no. Dwight Dwight had a three year deal. They yeah. I know. So so both of them signed three years. Yeah, as far as I know. Mm. Well, this so that's gonna. Be I don't know, but I don't. But I haven't heard like. I'm pretty sure. He, I'm, contract. I'm pretty sure he just has an option. Yeah, a player he's, option that's going in that he's gonna probably opt into mm -hmm. because it's like the biggest year on his contract right. was that last year. Yeah, but I don't. I'm not sure about that. Uh, right. What about Alex Lynn? Like, yeah. is he a part of the future, or is he a guy that could be moved? Because I've definitely been impressed with the improvement he's made this year. Mm -hmm. I've always said that Alex Lynn, he has the size, he has enough athleticism to be able to really contribute to a team's success. I just don't know what it is to where he isn't able to reach his his pinnacle. He yet. can't shoot. That's what it is, huh? He just can't shoot. I mean, that, I mean, he, but, he's getting better at shooting. And he's getting mm -hmm. better at that. I mean, that he's the type of big man. You remember when Tyson Chandler went to Dallas? Yeah. Everybody had kind of started giving up on him, and he went to Dallas, mm -hmm. and he found his role, and they won a championship. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Alex Lynn has that kind of ability to where he can go to a team and you know help him out. He can, and he's still young enough yeah, to where he, mm -hmm. he still has a lot of potential. He was a lottery lottery pick, top yeah, five, yeah, top five yeah. out of Maryland. Yeah. So I mean, so is it the shout coach? Out to my piece, I just did a piece on Alex Lynn. Y'all check that out. Nice. That's what's I mean, up. He, could, he could be the next Stephen Adams. Like yeah. Stephen Adams was in this same boat, but his team didn't give up on him. After his third year, right. Mm -hmm. So I mean, the thing about Alex Lynn that frustrates me is his catch is like his hands. <laughs> He's catching the ball. Like it's like it's like yeah. when, when getting a rebound. Like sometimes he acts like his hands don't work, and then <laughs> the ball just fumbles out of bounds, and wow. he has like four turnovers in the game. Damn, that, that's the thing that 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 gets me about him. It's just like, mm. I mean, but it's obviously easier from from the stands to be like. Catch the ball, you right. big man. Right. Yeah. Throw it down every time. Don't bring the ball down. Oh yeah, it's very easy to do that when you when you're um when you're uh, uh coaching the bleachers. But 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 that's definitely my my kind of like beef with him. But mm -hmm. I mean he he's a decent player. I don't know if he's in their long term plans. I, I so, don't think anyone except for um Trey, Herder, and, and Collins are safe. Yeah. Who's the big Billman. Uh he, he he needs to really <laughs> Become I don't know I don't know if it's because of his, the weight that he's carrying around that just kind of turns me off from him, but I don't know I don't know he just needs a lot more work in my opinion, <clears throat> offensively. Uh, some, someone did a, a breakdown about it and like his defense is sometimes he he kind of just lets things go on defense too. So yeah, mm -hmm. I mean yeah, like it's just that injury kind of comes help. down to effort. Yeah, mm -hmm. like, like was he one of those really guys that they just picked because they felt like they just had to pick someone just because they had to pick? No, nah, because remember they traded their second round pick. Oh, because they, they they had like I think one or two second round. They picks had they drafted they, uh, they Graham traded. with it. Yeah, and then they traded, traded him to. Mm. So it was like Charlotte? I guess they yeah, had Charlotte, like yeah. stock mm -hmm. into him or yeah. like hope in Spellman. But I mean, like at, at the thirty, when you get to the bottom of the first round, it's kind of like a crapshoot, anyways. Mm -hmm. It is. Like, it, it, it is. is. You kind of figure out who you who you working with or whatever's there. You just take it. He, he, exactly. He's, he's out of because a, a lot of them are going overseas anyway. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. But, but he, he's had a couple of good games offensively. Like he had like an eighteen point game in Cleveland, I believe, earlier this year and stuff like that. And then, um, um, speaking of late first round picks, RJ is is back in Boston. Shout out. Oh to yeah, RJ. that's right. Stay. There you go. Right. Shout out to RJ, man. He's putting Tell up like 46 in, in the G League. Yeah. He's been hooping, but, uh, oh, yeah. you know, that's the G League. And then now you're, you're back in the league. Yeah, he's so hard to figure out, man. He has a scoring ability, but he's just like, he gets right. with these teams that have all these guards and yeah. he don't have nowhere to play. Yep. Right. Yep. That's the now, thing. Now he's with, Sh okay. No, no, no. Go ahead, Rashad. Cause no, I'm, no, no. I was just going to say the obvious, like, Rozier. Right. Uh, Jalen Brown, Tatum, yeah. Smart. All those guys. But shout out to RJ for what he's doing off of the court in relation to Georgia State. I mean, 
he's really, really been that guy to to sort of be a mentor to Demarcus Simons, who has uh, a lot of potential and will very, you know, can very much well be in the NBA as well. Uh, you mm-hmm. know, his pops, Ron Hunter, always says in his press conferences that. You know, RJ, you know, talks to DeMarcus often and uh-huh. keeps him encouraged because teams are obviously catching on to the type of player he is now, you know, in the Sun Belt. And, you know, shout out to RJ for, you know, uh, for um, being that mentor to DeMarcus. Absolutely. Absolutely. That's a, you know, that's a magnanimous, you know, you know, thing for him to do on his part. And State's been hooping. I think, aren't they like 13 and 4? 13 and 4. 13 second, and 4 and undefeated in the Sun Belt. And second best 16. And, and the SEC. <laughs> and the SEC. Yeah. They, they uh they have the second best uh well the first best now 16 game start and the second best 17 game start uh of uh, in the of the entire program so that's huge oh wow that, that's, yeah, that's, that's huge kinda, i would have thought the first year with ryan harrell they would have went like undefeated or something right yeah. they did yeah. Yeah. ryan harrell was hooping yeah. that, that that first year too i'm trying to oh, think yeah. did they have one year where they had like an amazing streak where they won like 12 or 13 in they a row? did that was the first year with harrell if yeah, i remember yeah. correctly okay mm-hmm. I that know was they the was, first year with harrell but they started off slow they went like four and four to start and then they went on that streak, and then they lost in the Sun Belt Championship. Yeah, that yeah. was the first year when they had Payton. Ryan Harrell. Yeah, yeah, Alfred mm-hmm. Payton. <laughs> <laughs> Yo, but Alfred speaking of Payton. that, that Alfred Payton Ryan Harrell matchup is always something that I think about. But another one is, you know, um, when I saw Demarcus last year in that exhibition against Akogi. Yeah, and, and I think yeah. I think Simons is better. Thank and, you. And and and, and, and Akog- Akogi's getting playing time with with Minnesota. So when I look at that, I'm like, mm-hmm. well, logically speaking, Simons should you know be what what will Simons be in the NBA? What position will he play? He has to play uh, the one, in my opinion. He's not he's not big enough to play. He could play the two, he's but like, his jump shot isn't like isn't. Five? No, I think you're being generous. I'd give him at least. I'd give him six three and a half, six four. I don't think he's six five legit because you got Ben Le- Malik Ben Levy that mm-hmm. they list at what I think six seven maybe, and I don't you know I what don't I mean? know if Malik six seven but that's what I'm saying yeah, I don't yeah. think so so I don't think I don't think Demarcus is a solid six five I yeah. think he's about hovering around six three and a half six four yeah, yeah. I, I I could go with that I could go but with his that. his jump shot and I'm not you know knocking him because if he listens to this he's gonna give me hell on Twitter again we just we just <laughs> yeah we just cleared the air we just slapped five you know right uh, at, after the game last night or yesterday right. did you see his tweet last night yeah no. he goes in on so, the so someone was like someone was like uh, he tried. They, they responded to his last second shot because he won the game in the last second, and someone's yeah. like, "He traveled," and he retweeted it. And he's like, "Like hell!" Like <laughs> he's like, he's like, he's like and, "And I pushed off too." He's like, "Go!" Nope. Hey, oh, like, like I said, like I said, he goes to school where they teach you finesse. He owns it, so you can't, and, and, and he mad. said, "Go!" He said, "Go!" And, and, the, and the city go. where they teach you finesse. In the city where they teach you finesse. Oh boy, so, he's a funny dude, man. And then, yeah, and then you saw the one with the where the dude. <laughs> <laughs> tried to knock him out, bro, in, in the uh, in the uh, the family jewels. He tried to oh, he tried to do a Draymond. Yeah, yeah, and then and then he uh, he retweeted. He was like, he just wanted to touch daddy's back. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I think I saw that. I think I saw that. No. I think the, I saw the that, man. Demarcus is, that was, the is that, something else. That man. was classic. <laughs> he, he's he's going to be one of those guys who's probably going to have to like he's gonna, create he's a gonna, whole new Twitter. When he's he going to be around. like, yeah. no, he's going to be like he, Embiid. That's what it is. He's going to be like Embiid. No, oh, he's more savage than Embiid. Yeah, yeah, I yeah, think so. Exactly. Yeah, 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 and, and, and Embiid like is a little more censored, man. That dude yeah. has no filter, man. That, he it has no filter. I thought the funniest thing I'd heard him say was when he said, he said something about the state Not conference play. Yeah. yeah, it was like, oh, the Sun Belt is uh, it's thirteen and zero in non conference play. It ain't like, and he said like, like they forgot who who was daddy or something. <laughs> that was hilarious to me. I'm like, this dude is what right. 21, 22, The oldest call, say he daddy. Right. <laughs> hey, he got he got the right. He's owning it right now, man. He really is. Salute he really is. Funny. He got that swagger that's just perfect for the NBA, especially nowadays. Like he got like. He's got a confidence that I feel. We'll see if he gets into the league or not, or if he's you know relegated to G League status. But I feel like he got he got a swagger about him that I feel like if he gets into the league, like he'd be perfect. Trash talking teams on Twitter. That would that would be perfect. <coughs> that would be perfect. <laughs> <laughs> that would be perfect. You know they'd love that. You know they would. He's choking me. You know they would. All right. So the thing yeah. about Cam Reddish, and I don't know if this is is random, but I just thought about it. Cam, <laughs> like, yeah, all right, he's a great shooter. He's a great, great scorer. But I feel like when he's not, when he doesn't have it going offensively, that affects his entire game. 
I just oh, wanted yeah. to throw that out there. Yeah, yeah. I, I definitely think that's true. And that's I, that was just random, but yeah. that's why he's not the number one prospect because his offensive game would have him as the number one pick. Like his mm-hmm. his offensive game is better than RJ or Zion, like right mm-hmm. now. Right, but at the moment, that's that, because Zion. Can it's all problem, upstairs man. for Cam. Uh, yeah, and you remember yeah. when we talked about him last year? The, the worst, the 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 main knock I had on him was that I didn't think he was aggressive enough. Mm-hmm. It's just he kind of just floats. Until yeah, he, he he accepts that third option. Yeah, uh, and I don't want my franchise guy to be able to accept yeah, that. Yeah, so I agree. That's a great analogy there. I agree, and you know, I mean, obviously, you know, uh, Zion and and RJ are more boisterous in a sense. You know, Cam, like you said, he's he's more laid back. But mm-hmm. I don't know if that's gonna get you that that uh, top. You know, yeah. that top draft. I'm, I'm saying going, the same thing about KD too. He was the same. Yeah. Way. Yeah, he was. but I'm but going, then again, in college, knowledge. in college, he he, he, he had to score. He had to be a monster. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He was an assassin. But but we have um, I I rather take I'll take Nas Little over uh Cam Reddish. But okay, moving on. Everybody's talking about this kid, Jay Morant. I think his name is yeah, this week from Murray State. Yeah, from mm-hmm. Murray State. Uh, I haven't watched much of him. I just been hearing about him, and I've seen him dunk a couple times. That's it. That's all I know about the yeah, kid. I don't know much yeah. about him. Either. But 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 they're talking about they, he's sliding in that top five. That top, and I'm like. I saw him as high as two this week, and yeah, I was like, yeah. "What? Me, me yeah. too. Me too." I, 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 I didn't want to say it out loud, but like, yeah, what? I seen him as two. Okay, and, and, and I'm kind of like um, mock drafts gonna mock draft, and, and you know, yeah. and, and Yoda's a big fan of him. Mm-hmm. You know, uh, shout out to to Rashad Phillips, Yoda. Um, Speaking of which, Knicks fans are all in on Zion, and I was gonna say he, the New York, the city, period, needs someone as. Uh, you know, explosive as Zion. They need that type of, of you, you electricity. You laughed at the idea of playing for the Knicks. I know. <laughs> he said, yeah, no. Nah, he, 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 he don't said, need to be there. He, he said Atlanta. He really wanted to go to Atlanta. Well, he didn't say that. He just said Atlanta is always showing love on social media. Honestly, yeah. every athlete should want to play in Atlanta, just to be real, because this is – this this is isn't I, it a distraction? Why? It, yeah, because yeah. because outside of the sports uh, programs, not you know necessarily winning at why, a high why, rate. Why would you want to go somewhere and be cursed? Well, because <laughs> you got strip clubs, you got groupies. Isn't that, isn't that got, the exact reason you got, why you wouldn't want to come to Atlanta? No, <laughs> these strip, young these young guys. Strip these, clubs are everywhere. You got but the, <laughs> but, the best. At least you won't be cursed. The best hey, strip clubs. You got you got uh, the Migos, not just Quavo, but the Migos. Yeah. I mean, you got you got all of the limelight here in Atlanta. Well, that's that's yeah. cool, right. but I mean. You can't enjoy it because you curse. Well, that, that's not to say that they'll spend their entire career here. I, I Maybe think, they I, just. I think, I think Trey Young's enjoying being here. I, I, yeah, I, I know. I, I think Trey Young is true Atlanta. Miami. Miami's Miami. Miami. better. Miami. Is, you got Miami. the beach. You got the sun. Be- you got the strip Beasley clubs. Beasley you got the. That, you got the. You career. got the. You got the street that just looks like the strip club. Right. Then you got the street next to it. That <laughs> looks Miami like is just one big Cuba. strip club. I mean, it's, it's it, like it's so much to see in Miami. Yeah, I yeah. agree. But you heard what Beasley said. Beasley said he felt like his career is ruined because he started off in Miami. Too much Who? pressure, man. Because uh, he, he, he had the he, he just wasn't gonna be good anyway. But, but it was the beach and everything. He should have stayed yeah. in New York, man. And was, I know it wasn't his decision, but he had most of his highlights came from being in New York. No, no, no. I mean, Be- Beasley's had a good career. I feel, I feel like people don't give Beasley enough credit just because. How he performed in college. Yep. I feel like Beasley's had a good NBA. He was career. never going to be a thirty point per game scorer like he right. was in college. Most, right. That most was unrealistic. Don't pan out like that. I mean, but him, for him to have it, it, was, it was like his game. He's like a post player, post first. <laughs> yeah. And he's only like six eight. So right. it was like it was. It didn't make sense anyway. Yeah. But for him to average like twelve or thirteen, like he's had average for his career, that's a decent career. Yeah, it mm-hmm. is. It yeah, is. definitely. I, I think Hollowell's ever gonna make it out the G League. No, no I'm jumping uh, all over the place. <laughs> And I like Ski. Shout out to Yerm Ski, man. I like him too, man. He he's a good dude, but yeah, I don't know. He's he's someone else that's very. Uh, he's not. He's not. He doesn't have the dog in him. I hate to say it, but he doesn't have that dog in him that you need in order to you know transition to the NBA. He, the thing is, you know what you gotta do just to get a, a chance in the NBA? You gotta score fifty. 50. Like yeah. yeah, like Jalen Adams, put up RJ type numbers. J- Jalen Adams scored fifty, and the Hawks called him up to sit on the bench for one day before sending them back to Erie. Oh, <laughs> yeah, yeah. And, and then RJ scored forty six, like 43, 42, 39, 39, 45. Yeah, and then Boston gave him a two way. 
way. <laughs> two way. <laughs> two way deal. So you still going back? Still going. You can come exactly. sit with us for a day. <laughs> right. Exactly. Like what? the NBA is tough when yeah. you think about right. it. Yeah. Right. Like all those guys can play. Like that's what the rookie say. I didn't know every guy could play in the NBA. Oh, every that, dude that can play true, in the so. NBA. That's why they there. There's a reason there's only 15 slots. Yeah, Danny, only Hamilton. Teams. Danny right. Hamilton. Danny Hamilton. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Did, so. did you say 32? You think the NFL? 30. <laughs> <laughs> I was thinking about the NFL. You still think about football. <laughs> football! <laughs> right. Yeah, right. Yeah, yeah football's ahead, dead. King. What, what, what are we talking about next? What are we talking about next? Bulldogs, man. <laughs> oh, man. Tate Martell. <laughs> Tate Martell. He, is he coming? <laughs> Tell you think, me about you it. Think, it. Do you think that's the best fit for him to uh, come to Georgia? I don't want him here. No? No, I'm good. Mm-hmm. Why? He's a dual threat, isn't he? No, that's cool. He I just don't. doesn't fit what you guys want to do? He, I don't like him. As yeah. A personality. Like, he's just... Mm-hmm. I, don't, I, I don't know the kid. I don't know the kid, and I I haven't seen him do anything that's negative. It's just he's not a leader. Mm. Not that I mean, not we, that guy that has we that. Can't, we, can't, we can't go from Jake Fromm to Tate Martell. <laughs> yeah, that's a, that sounds like to me like a downgrade. <laughs> yeah, that's like, going from, that's like going from President Obama to Jay-Z. <laughs> now Jay Z said that he can sell water to a well. So if 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 someone got that much finesse, I think he you could, can, he could be a good leader. Selling <laughs> and leading is two different things. Take Martell will make us funny. Yeah, he'll make us fun to watch. Right. Uh-huh. But we ain't gonna be in no national championship games. Like yeah. you want national championships if you're in Athens, because at this point we don't been all those other things before. We've been exciting. We've been funny. We've been cool. You've been, we've been flashy. We've been flashy. Exactly. I want my meat and potatoes, and I want a ring. Yeah, exactly. You want what Clemson got, what Clemson just got with Trevor Lawrence. Yeah, I mean, people act like Clemson's this exciting team. What what is exciting? What is exciting about Clemson other than Chris Wilkins? And outside of uh, Trevor Lawrence's um, play, Justin Ross. I feel uh, like I, he's he's exciting on the field, but he, he's a Ross freshman, so he can't Phoenix, talk to media. Yeah, so here, you know what I'm saying, Central Phoenix. That's <laughs> just outside my coverage area. Shout out to uh, the whole Bama flock, Bama gang. I feel like that <laughs> lots of people are going to start to, you know, finally, you know, because of this increased exposure now that, you know, they want, now that Clemson won the national championship, people are going to start to know who Trevor Lawrence is. Oh, yeah, for Devin, sure. Devin Booker pledged to, like he's gonna be uh, the next Tua. to to give two and a half million dollars to support Arizona children and families in need. Shout out to D. Cool. Book. Shout oh, out yeah. to D. Book. That's awesome. That's oh, awesome. yeah. That, that must mean he's looking to stay there. Yeah. Yeah, right. All right, uh, but but I remember Aiton when he was in college and they were rumoring uh, Phoenix. He was like, "Oh man, he had the look, looking eye emoji." He was like, "Kobe and Shaq." Ah, uh, <laughs> try again. Yeah, maybe try not. Again. Maybe try not. Again. And plus, I feel like that if you're gonna go for a, if you're gonna go for a big two, are you sure you want to go for that sort of like dynamic duo? Because right. really, when you think about it, Kobe and Shaq should have won like five, six rings, not three. I agree. I think everyone. I don't know that. That was a little before my time. <laughs> well, it, I was watching, you know, I'm not too much older than you, Rashad, yeah. I'm, you know, but I did, you know, keep tabs on them just from looking back on their films and stuff. You know, YouTube, you, yeah. could, you could watch anything on YouTube. But, yeah. I mean, I definitely do agree that Kobe and Shaq should have won more. I mean, that's obvious in my opinion. But Right. They really exactly. kind of missed the team but when they start trying to add all these superstars. Yeah. Right. Like True. When Gary Payton and Carl Malone, Malone, they didn't need all those guys. They that, were being washed. That, they were well, well, big washed, the team. That ruined uh, the team. Yeah, yeah, I didn't understand the logic behind and, and they, that. They all were, you know. That yeah. was when they I realized that drama each away from the court. Yeah. 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 That, that was when I realized uh, just getting names don't win your championship. Yeah, yeah. You, cannot have that, you cannot have that many alpha males all on. You know, you cannot have that many alpha males all on one team no. and expect it to click. Obviously, we're the exception to that rule. But, <laughs> <laughs> but when it comes to the NBA, I feel like that when you put that many – you know that many egos all on one team. There's only so much that Phil Jackson yeah, could have done. You can't. You can't have too many superstars. Look at the Hawks. They have Jeremy Lin and Vince Carter on the same team. <laughs> you can't do that. It's not gonna work. Why is? The, hold up, really quickly. Speaking of VC, that's my dude. Why? Why? Why, why is? The, why are they trying to force the man to retire? Let him oh, ball that, till he falls. That's fall. crazy. That's crazy. Let him ball till he like, falls. Okay. Yeah, what do you lose? Votes. The, the, the Toronto one. You got to give him a tribute every time he comes back because it's Toronto, just in case. Yeah. Brooklyn doing. It was kind of like, all right, this is your life. <laughs> you done, big fella. <laughs> and I'm oh, like, dang, man. man, don't push my man's out. If you want to ball, let him ball. He, Vincenity he, is still getting all star votes. That is crazy to me. Oh, well, you know, that, that's just that's the, uh, the, the, uh, the farewell, farewell votes. Yeah. Farewell. Yeah. Man, so BC is what, still. Dwayne Wade, too. He's still doing 360 dunks. You know what I'm saying? Like, wow. he, yeah, need, yeah, he yeah, needs yeah. to stay in the league. 
for as long as he wants. I'm not saying give him significant minutes, mm-hmm. but let him let him feel good. Let you know what coach. I mean? Got me yeah, out he, he here, Brett Favre, trying to see if I still got it. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, oh my but, gosh. But, uh, man, Aiden, bro. Aiden's balling, but uh, how, how long? It, uh, is the clock on for Devin Booker? Like, no. Nah. As far as, you know, nah. one of those people who's going to live off of one game. Nah. Mm. I mean, he's, he's, he's a young star, for sure. I think he has the the ability to be one of the top. But when is it going to turn into wins? They're li- dead last in the West. They have well, Worst no case wins. scenario for D-Book is Kemba. Worst case scenario nah. is Kemba. It would be like Clay Thompson playing on the team by himself. Exactly. Mm. There you go. Clay Thompson is not winning anything he, he, by, he, by himself. Do you exactly. think they'll be that bad with just Clay Thompson, a team? Yeah. Yeah. If you don't have the pieces. I, know, I mean, you Clay, have- you, you got to look at Joe Johnson, right? Joe Johnson was the fourth best player on that big Phoenix team. And then he went to the Hawks and he carried them to the playoffs. But check it out, you gotta. He, you gotta uh, the games are so different. Like Clay Thompson's not a ball handler, and he's not gonna like he can't right, create. Right. He had four scored. dribbles. Yeah, he and bang bang he bang. Scored, like scoop. what forty on, on four dribbles? On four yeah. dribbles against the Knicks, of course. <laughs> but you gotta you gotta put this into uh, you gotta consider this as well. Devin Booker is a small guy. No small dude outside of AI is gonna take a team to the 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 promised land. Right. You know what I'm saying? So, but you have eight in there. Yeah, but that's two guys. He's an 18 He's not year old. Eight, eight, and, yeah, exactly. Aiton isn't a Tim Duncan when Tim came in the league or a Kevin Garnett. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? But so, even Tim Duncan had David Robinson. David Robinson. People don't realize how great Avery David Johnson. Robinson was when they he played. They forget that. They, they forget, forget how great of a big man he was. The he Admiral. was great. Exactly, because they put people, so much. People forget how good of a big man Buck Williams was. They what, put so what, much. Who is that? <laughs> exactly. Yeah, uh, it's in one of our teasers for the A League, where, where, where we were talking about Jordan, and then you're like, Jordan played nobody. And I was like, the Portland Trailblazers. He had Buck Williams and Clyde Drexler, and you're like, who's Buck Williams? And Terry Porter. But Buck Williams, exactly. Buck Williams is top fifteen all time in rebounding. He's one of the greatest power forwards ever. Well, that's what's up. But David exactly. Robinson, <laughs> but, 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 David, David, David Robinson, all, all time. time but I'm just saying, he is an all time. But Buck Williams is up there for all time greatest. Uh, but David and, and Robinson then, and then won you had Clyde Drexler on the team too. David Robinson and Tim Duncan won rings. But, Tim but, Duncan but, won rings but, but, with but, with, uh, with with um, Tony Parker. And I'm, I'm just saying, going to the Jordan argument. Yeah, you know, like like that Jordan played nobody like in the finals. Jordan definitely played. He definitely put because Ma- he Ma- Malone and, and Stockton. That's what I'm saying. Two, yeah, twice. and who else? He he. And, then he, and, he played the Portland Trailblazers. He played us uh, and okay. the Los Angeles Lakers. Didn't he play the Phoenix Suns too when they had when they had Barkley? Yeah, and yeah. and MVP Barkley. Not yeah. to mention he also had to get through That's the back. Right. He had to get through the bad boys a little bit. It was the latter part of you know their run, but he still had to get through you know Zeke and. Uh, those guys and in the Detroit. Celtics. Yeah, I'm and talking about and Dominique MV, Wilkins. MVP. And the when they had Dominique Ewing. Wilkins. Oh, you know, I'll just. Hey. <laughs> oh my god. <laughs> yeah, you just said a bunch of stuff. Just yeah. then. they had to get through the Knicks too with Ewing yeah. and everything, and they've been building ever since Ewing the retired. Ni- the Knicks yeah, got through themselves, yeah. and, and the Pacers. <laughs> and well, oh. Indiana wasn't. Now he that. pushed. Now he pushed. Yeah, oh, yeah. Hey, hey old, old Reggie Miller made the finals. You mentioned that's good for him. The Lakers. So you just imagine prime Reggie Miller. But name somebody else on that Pacers squad that was just like, whoa. I don't know. I was I was okay. like two years old. Uh, but I'm saying, <laughs> though, but you would still be able to, you know what I'm saying? I mean, saying? the, yeah. the, the Pacers yeah. had some ballers back in the day, not just Reggie. They had to, yeah. <laughs> None of those teams know. compare to <laughs> prime Spurs, prime uh, Thunder, prime Warriors. Prime, prime. Thunder didn't oh, even uh, win Mark a Mark Jackson, Mark Jackson. Prime Thunder didn't even uh, win a ring. Tripping. Mark, he was he – was, Mark was definitely solid yeah, in Mark, Indiana. Mark nah, Jackson. Mark was yeah. definitely yeah. solid. If Mark, if Mark Jackson Mark played in the NBA solid. now, he'd be coming off the bench. He, he, uh, he, he, was, he was the point that's guard when they made the finals. Yeah, yeah, you're right. Yeah. You're definitely right. That's Mark, cool. Yeah. And, and that was before Jermaine O'Neal, if I'm yeah. not mistaken. Jermaine right. O'Neal would be coming off the yeah. bench today. Right. Wait, no, no, no. Jermaine O'Neal was probably in the league. I just he was really he was young. He was really yeah, he didn't. he didn't start out with the Pacers, did he? No, I thought he was with Seattle, wasn't he? He played with Portland. Yeah, I knew it was one of them. He played with Portland. It was Portland. It was Portland. Yeah, because yeah. yeah. okay. they had him, Bonzi Wells. Yeah, there you go. She, uh, she, Scottie, she, Scotty, Scotty. Uh, one more too. They point guard was uh, uh Damon Stoudemire. Yes. Yeah. Damon Mighty Stoudemire. Mouse, <laughs> Mighty <laughs> Mouse. <laughs> the, the, I, the I, I, they actually had a nice little the team for a couple of years. Jail Blazers and Steve Smith. <laughs> and oh, Steve man. Smith Steve still had a little. Oh man, Steve had it now. That brought back some memories. Shout out to Steve Smith. He always be at the Georgia State games. Right. I, I, hey, where you at, Steve? I haven't seen you. I've been there, man. Where, uh-huh. where, you, yeah, where you at? Yeah. We 
Hey, Coach Hunter, he sound like he might bounce. Yeah. The way, you think the way, so? Well, I mean. The way he's been talking in regards to the fans not coming out and showing their respect and support for this great Georgia State team the past the two years. Well, that rules out Georgia. Man, I'm telling you, man, <laughs> I, I, I'm not going to sit here and say that he's definitely going to leave because, you know, they got that new arena that they're about to construct soon. But exactly. He was really upset in, he, in the he, last press conference. He was about to leave uh, – a couple of years ago. He was. Yeah. yeah. There were all those rumors about how he was going to go to Texas or something like that. But I, I get Coach Hunter's point. Like, this is, th- there's no question that this is the best college team in Georgia. And the fact that they're having such problems selling out the sports, sports arena, like, get to a game. Like, get to a few games, as a matter of fact. Show real, this team I'm some love. be real with you, Akeem. That's just, that's just Georgia sports. It, it's, <laughs> like, and, then, and then it's not the right school. Yeah. Like, it's, right it's, 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 first of all, it's basketball. Yeah. And then... I mean, I can't. I can't even say it's just basketball is the reason why. Because like, if you go to Braves games, like the Braves were winning last year and they had like empty seats. Yeah, you're right. Mm. And you St. Know, Louis, St. Louis Cardinals sell out every game. Every game, win or St. lose. St. Louis is baseball. Win or lose. Win or lose. And but but that's. I had an argument too with a couple of guys on Twitter. Uh, mm-hmm. I wouldn't. I wouldn't say an argument, but it was a you know a dispute or whatnot. Uh, I said that Atlanta, the Atlanta fan base, man, they they have a really hard time with. Uh, committing to a team when they lose or win. Yeah. And I said, New York fan bases, they going to sell out that Madison Square Garden regardless. Oh, you know yeah, what I'm you know. For the most part. I'm not going to sit here and say every night is going to be sold out. But, right. you know, they, they had a – they they try to say that, oh, no, nah, it's only when you guys are winning. I'm like, no, it's not. When's the last time we won? <laughs> like nineteen ninety nine, exactly. fans. It shows that those fans are, you know. I think the last, I think the last time that the Knicks won were, were winning was ironically when everybody was going crazy over Lynn Sanity. That's yeah. the last time when there was actually some what? real, real, real hype around the Knicks. And mm-hmm. then ever since then, it's just you know it, they've had Porzingis, but you know it's just been what it is since then. All right, another episode in the books. First episode of twenty nineteen in the books. Episode ninety four. Once again, A League. Thanks again, once again for tuning in. In and listening, whichever whichever method you listen to. So, uh, how about we get out here and do our do our sign offs, shall we? Shad, go ahead and kick it off, baby. Yeah, <laughs> shadmillan.com. You can follow me on Twitter at see you guys next month. <laughs> uh, this is Jeremy Johnson. My Twitter is Clark underscore Kent underscore seventy five. Give a Superman on. You. you can also follow me under. Hurt Georgia sports fan. <laughs> Hurt Georgia sports fan. Crying Georgia sports fan. And disappointed Georgia sports fan. <laughs> Go ahead, man. It's Dimitri Chin checking in. Uh, you can follow me on Twitter at one. That's uh, the number one. Dimitri Chin. Instagram, Mr. Dimitri. Chin. Yes, sir. Absolutely. Trenches. Absolutely. <laughs> Akeem Balaam, Twitter, Graham, Beyond the W, hashtag, go sorry for Laurie, check <laughs> it out. Get them remember, trenches. Remember Atlanta United, things turn around. <laughs> go sorry for Laurie. Go sorry for Laurie. That's hilarious. Y'all must thought that I was gonna whisper the whole time. Hey, mistress, uh, diamonds they wear like go fishing. Uh, uh, Y'all don't want friends, I want Audis. Audis. I don't want cars, I want Rari's. Uh, I don't want